How's it guys and welcome back. If you've just joined us, this is Tenfold Live. We're covering metric maths and we're doing analytical geometry. Today we're going to be delving into a lot of different stuff. We've already done straight lines, we've shown you some theory about it, we've also done some horrendous manipulation of algebraic expressions, but hopefully it helps you simplify your maths understanding a little bit. For now, I want to be really, really cute and send a shout out to my granny because she hasn't missed a single one of my shows, guys. She was in matric eons ago and she still watches my show, so hi. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to jump straight into the next question. It's from Kumo and it's actually a really great question. Kind of pushes your theoretical understanding, so let's check it out. Ms. Kumo, I'd like help with this question. Okay, this question, guys, kind of delves into stuff that's not really part of your syllabus, but does become important when you start going into AP maths or if you want to further your triangular knowledge, because there are certain things or parts of triangles that actually show how cool mathematical relationships are, particularly something in, mentioned in this question. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to do quite a fair bit of teaching and explaining and stuff in this question because there's a lot of theory in it that's actually really cool about triangles. But anyway, let's see what this question has to ask us and hopefully I can help you be a little bit more excited about your triangles. It says, the centroid of triangle ABC with vertices A, B and C, A has an unknown X value but B and C are given to us, is the point S at 4 and an unknown Y value. Calculate the values of X and Y. Okay, so the things that stand out to me, vertices, for those of you who are unsure of that word, it's just a fancy word for the corners of a triangle. Triangle has three points, A, B, C. All of these points are vertices. One of them is a vertex, okay? So, these are the coordinates of the points of the triangle, and it says that the centroid of A, B, C is given at point S. Okay, so, for those of you who don't know, if I draw out a triangle, Obviously, I'm going to make it look like an equilateral, just because I think they're pretty. If I divide each of the sides in half, and then I decide to connect each of the vertices to the opposite midpoint, all three of these lines should theoretically intersect with each other at the centroid, which is that S that we've been given there. Which is really cool, because if you take, even if it's not an equilateral, if you have an isos triangle or a scalene triangle or an obtuse triangle that doesn't even look like it makes sense, if you divide each and every side of the triangle and you connect the opposite vertex to that midpoint, all of those lines are going to intersect at exactly the same point, because geometry is just that cool. I love geometry. That's the centroid of a triangle. What you also need to know, not necessarily for metric, but to understand this question, cool things about the centroid. Well, firstly, I've established it's the point of intersection of the, we call those lines the medians of the triangle. The median is basically the line drawn from a vertex to the opposite midpoint of a triangle. So it is the point of intersection of the medians of a triangle. And also the centroid divides the medians in a ratio of 2 to 1. What I mean by this, look at me trying to talk and write at the same time, ratio. Okay, so what I mean by this ratio, if you look at this diagram here, if you go from the vertex, I'm going to pick C, and you go along this median, this length up into the centroid is two times this length here. And that'll be the same for every single part of these medians. So that'll be 2p there, 2p there, 1p there, and 1p there. Okay, so it divides the medians in a very specific ratio. Okay, so now I'm going to try and map out the situation that we've been given here. A, let me actually do it here, now that I've explained to you what a centroid is. Okay, so they say that A sits at X and 5, so I'm going to put that over here. B sits at 4 and negative 2, so that'll probably be around here somewhere. 
C sits at 14 and negative 9, so this is very badly drawn to scale, but it'll probably be down here somewhere. 4 and negative 9, it's 14 over there. And that will give us this like bizarre looking triangle. So remember what I said, the centroid is somewhere kind of in the middle of the triangle and it's where all the medians intersect. Okay, so try and remember that. Median, line from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. All of those lines intersect with each other at the centroid. So, centroid here is given to us as S at 4 and Y. Now if we look carefully guys, the X value at B over here, this X value, is the same as the one at S, okay? So that means that S sits perfectly vertically above B at four and an unknown value Y, okay? So we know that this here is perfectly vertical, which means that that distance between S and B is just a distance in Y values. It has no X interference, okay? Then we also know that if we continue with this line, because this is the start of a median, it would continue to here, I know this is really badly joined, but it would bisect this side. It doesn't look like it does, but it does. And that would be the midpoint of AB. So now they're saying, find this X value of A over here and find the Y value of the centroid over there. Okay, so how do we even do this? Well, first of all, if we try and work with midpoints, because that's what ties the y value and the x value that we're trying to find together, we can try and find the coordinates of this MAB. So remember, it's the x value plus the other x value that you're working with, which is that 14 here, divided by 2 for the x coordinate. And for the y coordinate, you do the same, so it would be 5 plus negative 9, which is the same as 5 minus 9, which is negative 4 over 2, which would give us negative 2, okay? But remember what I said here, guys, this vertical line here means that all of these points, M, S, and B, all have the same X value because they all sit on that line of X equals 4. They all sit on a vertical line, which means they all have the same X value. So, if I'm looking here at this midpoint, it means that that X value there, that X plus 14 over 2, is equal to 4 because they all have the same X value of 4. So, if I solve for X, I get that X is equal to negative 6, okay? So this midpoint here, MAB, sits at negative 6 and negative 2, okay? So now we found the value of X, we need to try and find the value of Y. Well, we've implemented this as a part of our theory. Now, how do we use this to help us with our calculations? Well, 2 to 1 ratio, remember if you start at the vertex, and you move along the median, means that this here is going to be two times longer than that there. Okay, so let me redraw this because this diagram is getting a little iffy. On the same line, we have M at, we said it was negative six and negative two. We have the centroid, which is at four. I'm talking absolute rot here. That negative 6 was at the A point up there. This is also at 4. Remember A sat somewhere up here and it had negative 6. Here we have 4 and the unknown Y. And down here we have, it was B at 4 and negative 2. Okay, that gives us some interesting things to think about, but I'll go delve into that just now. So that means we have a line here with these points on it. Okay, so remember this distance here is twice this distance here. So if we find these distances, we can simply find that Y value. If we look for the distance here, it means that we're going to get negative two minus Y. And if we look at these distances here, we say MS divided by SB, because if we're trying to find the ratio here, we know that that ratio is 2 to 1 because of the midline and the median and the centroid, okay? So ms is best expressed by the change in y values, so it's negative 2 minus y, 
all over this distance here, which is also the change in y. So it's y minus negative 2, which is the same as y plus 2. And that is in the ratio of 2 to 1. Okay, so easy. Now we just solve for y. We get equal to 2 multiplied by y plus 2. So we get 2y plus 4. Then we solve for y. We get 3y on this side. It's equal to negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6 which means that y is equal to negative 2. So the centroid sits here at 4, negative 2. Now, look at this. All three of these points here have the same coordinates. What could that possibly mean? It means that S sits there, the midpoint sits there, and so does B. Well, that means, guys, that simply they took a theoretical triangle and they said, if this sits here, this sits here, this sits here, and we find all the medians and we make them intersect at the centroid, they're going to have a theoretical coordinates at the centroid. Obviously, whoever wrote this question didn't bear in mind that solving for all of these coordinates are going to put all three of those points in the same spot. So if they're all in the same spot, let's see what this kind of means for us. Because B, S, and M are there, it means, remember what M is, it's the midpoint of AC, okay? So this here is the midpoint of AC. If C sits over here, and this is the midpoint, that means that A sits somewhere out here, because it's the midpoint of this line AC. And if the centroid sits there as well, and B sits there, it means that A is there. So solving for these particular X and Y values means that it's not actually a triangle, it's all a straight line. But if you apply your centroid theory and your triangle theory, it means that that theoretical triangle translates perfectly onto a straight line. And it's questions like this that completely bring my geek out because Look how beautiful this is, guys. Isn't maths incredible? Some of it has probably completely lost you, but the fact that this stuff works, that triangle theory applies to line theory, is just phenomenal. And it just happened by sheer hap happenstance. Like, a line existed, it could be a triangle, it could not be, because maths is weird like that. Anyway, I'm going to put my little excited geekness away. For now, we're going to go straight into an ad break so you can try and process what I've just tried to explain to you. And we will be back for another question after this. So make sure you stay tuned. We love having you with us.